Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about some interesting custom tactics. Thanks to Mr. Edge Apes. A little 3, 4, 1, 2 action, which you may think is crazy. But they actually work really well. Extremely fun. Defense was a learning curve. But I'll explain how I was also able to defend with this formation. It did take me about 10 to 15 games, so there is a learning curve. But we'll cover that and more in today's tactics video. Are you fed up of coming against God Squad game in and game out? What? If so, make sure to head over to u7buy.com using the link in the description below. And don't forget to use code RAN at checkout for an extra little discount. So before we get into the tactics, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed tactics video, subscribe if you guys are new. And comment what you think of the tree 412. Is it too crazy? Or do you think it can work? Anyways, like I said, shout out Age Japes for the formation and instructions and tactics. Leave a link in the description to his Twitter. But basically, he's gone out here with this tree 412 that is aggressive defensively and is really, really really good attacking what you would expect like a tree rex always good attacking now we'll, we'll we'll start off just talking about the tactics right so actually we'll talk about my lineup first so this is how i line up so from what i kind of learned from out, i got rid of janola for playing this by the way i was playing janola by striker i didn't like his dribbling enough for kind of how it played but that's just my preference um then also, I feel like the left and right mid have to be like those fullback kind of players. You can also use like a box to box midfielder with good pace. But for me, I've gone with just two fullbacks. Now, I want to make this a Kimi team of the year. I think it would be phenomenal here. And then this year, back three, I just center back. So, really, I have Kamara, who's a CDM, but you know, just solid pace, solid defense, and physical, and a bit of height. Pretty standard. Striker's pretty standard. Cam. It's like a nimble, kind of agile player I like. And then midfielders, I just have essentially a box-to-box -box and a stay back. But I like both of them being able to dribble. I think that's big as well. And both of them can pass. So let's get started in the tactics. So you'll see this pressure on heavy touch. So obviously, you know, if there's a heavy touch, your team is going to swarm them and press them instantly. So if you're not used to playing pressure on heavy touch, you're going to get used to that. Okay, because if you're not switched on and your team press and you just kind of stand there thinking you're defending with balanced, all of a sudden your team is pushed, but you kind of sat back and you can just play it past you. So you kind of have to be switched on for that. Definitely a learning curve. Definitely a learning curve for sure. Just to give you guys an example. I actually, I think I lost my first, or out of my first six games, I think I won one and lost five. Okay, and I was like convinced these tactics were terrible. I'll be honest, I, I was not having a good time whatsoever. But there was things I learned. So on that defense, okay, you got pressure on heavy touch. But also, I feel like if the press isn't triggered, you're going to want to control those center mids. Keep them back as far as you can and mark passing lanes. As well, the number one key thing is the counterattack. Okay, so you, when you're running a tree back, especially with pressure on heavy touch, your opponent is going to go for that counterattack a lot, a lot. And I wasn't quite switched on to that enough originally, and I was getting destroyed in counterattack. But if you can be disciplined during that counterattack and keep all your players back, be smart, and you survive the counterattack, well, then you're chilling. We'll get into it with instructions while you're chilling, but essentially your left and right mids are on comeback on defense, right? So you, it actually starts into a five back. And from there, you're absolutely chilling. You'll be fine defensively, but you just have to get past that counterattack stage. The width and depth, relatively standard stuff, not too much to say there. Offensively, he's gone for direct passing, which there's actually one instruction I do change on these tactics. Um, but I'll, I'll explain what it is, and you guys can decide which you want to use. But direct passing obviously gets your players up the pitch, gets them sitting deep, Kind of in your opponent's box and you can pass it into them there with 55 pretty simple plays in box four 
Which does sound low, but it's actually not because I assume this is set up to keep your center mids out of the box so that they can um, like cover on the counterattack. And they also, you want them playing on the edge of the box because of what the cam is, he ends up being another shadow striker. Um, and then corners free kicks just on two each. So we'll start with the offensive instructions and we'll just explain everything. So you've got your two strikes. Now, Edge Apes uses double get him behind and stay forward on your strikers. I personally didn't like it. I played a lot of games with it, and if you guys watch my tags videos, you know I don't ever mix direct passing with get him behind. And the reason is that I don't force those like early counterattack true balls to the strikers, which get him behind is really effective for. What I actually do is I like to build up slightly slower, and then pass it to them when they're already in the box. Now the problem with that is if you have get in behind, they keep doing like this run thing basically. So they constantly stand like either behind the center back or offside. So you can just never pass to them. So for me, I need to switch it to mixed so that that pass is open for me because I am going slightly slower. If you're going like mad counter attack or just flying at them, do use to get him behind, but for me, I, I couldn't get success with it, so I did take it off. But everything else is the exact same. Cam, you got to stay forward, get into the box for cross. Now, like I said this year, with the cam on getting the box for cross, they basically just get in the box a lot more and act as like another striker. So you can easily pass between these three players very easily, and you're going to have the left and right mid as kind of overlapping as well, so you do have a lot of options. So it's really nice and really easy to pass between these and create goals. At the right and left mid or right wing back or left wing back kind of vibe, um, I do have, like I said, two fullbacks. Now the only instruction on these is come back on defense. Um, to be honest, it kind of makes sense, right? Because again, the box across, you don't really want them there. Um, but then at the same time, you don't want them kept out. You don't want them to cut inside, but you don't want them to stay wide either, you know, because cutting inside will get in Mbappe's way, kind of, and then stay wide will just never get in a shooting opportunity. And then support ones, I feel like you could go get him behind for this, but then I feel like it would absolutely kill your stamina. Um, but, you know, it's up to you. I think just come back and defense and balance, like AJ says, is pretty solid. Now, at the center mid roll, he goes for the double, stay back while attacking, double, stay on the edge of the box, and like I said, they're going to be sitting out there, and that also goes in with the players in box being on four. Pretty solid. Uh, I do think you definitely can't have these not on stay back, um, or you would just get absolutely short defensively. Also, key thing to note, of course, you got your cover wing, not your cover center, which I do think is huge when playing tree backs, but not any tree back. This tree back has extra reasons to actually do this. So let's get into it. Well, on your wide center backs, you actually want to use overlap and step up. Now, what I did with this was I would start a lot of attacks with, say, Kamara. So the center center back is still stay back. With Kamara, pass it over to Rudiger. Rudiger would actually be kind of more at the right CDM kind of role, say. So he's a bit further up. And then he can distribute it to Hakimi or play it through the middle. So he's just getting that extra bit of kind of field uh, pitch control. Kind of further up the pitch. And you can start your attack there. Pretty effective. And obviously the double step up on them is going to definitely squeeze heavily. Especially on that pressure and heavy touch. Um, and I believe the idea is that Kakare then and Cancelo in two center mids. With cover wing and stay back will be able to cover if your center backs do get out of position. And then with the goalkeeper, you're going comes for crosses, sweep a keeper. So that is the tactics covered. But just a few points I want to make about the formation as well. One thing to keep in mind is that, of course, basically because it is a tree back, you, do, you really can't gamble defenders at all. Unless you're going for that. Once the pressure on heavy touch triggers... You can definitely go for the press, but you have to really be careful. You can't make a mistake. A lot of times, I just made one kind of wrong step with a center back. All of a sudden, true ball in, I've conceded. So it's super risky. But, I mean, it does play into that risk-reward scenario, right? So you can press with that pressure and heavy touch. You win the ball back. You can fly your opponent. You can score as well. 
So keep that in mind. It's not going to be the best defensively at all. Even now, I've gotten a lot better at it. I kind of know when to press, when not to press, how to stop the counterattack, and kind of set up defensively if you need to and whatnot. But you're still going to concede goals. It's just simple as you're going to concede goals. But the idea is the attack is really nice and free-flowing that you're going to outscore your opponents. Your games are going to go from 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, kind of what they are now, especially in this meta, to more of kind of a 5-3 sort of game, right? So you're going to get more goals. So pros is literally more fun, score more goals, actually enjoyable experience. Cons, probably going to lose more games than you would using like a 4-4-2 or something along those lines. Um, and way, way less solid defensively. So you're definitely going to leak a lot more goals. But it's also new information. It's fresh, you know. It gives new life to FIFA. And I think, honestly, unless you're in Elite Division, because I've used it all my games in Elite Division. I've struggled kind of here and there. Um, definitely, if you're lower than Elite Division, you're definitely going to love this, for sure. Elite Division, you're going to struggle a little bit. And if you're kind of high foot champions, you might struggle a little bit against some players. But if you're looking for fun, this is definitely the way to go. Just make sure you watch that counterattack. That's still the number one thing to do. The second key tip I have is what I was doing earlier when I first started using this formation is I was over dribbling. I was really over dribbling. I think that's definitely not the way to play. I don't think you're supposed to dribble a lot in this at all. I think you want to keep the passes going, right? So, like, I might have had it with Cancelo, and maybe Messi was open or something, or Hakimi was kind of open, and I just kind of hold it with Cancelo and, like, wait for the perfect opportunity. I don't think that's how it's supposed to be played. I think if the Messi passes on, pass it to him, and then you'll find another pass, pass it there. You can see another pass, pass it there. Keep it flowing. Don't get stuck kind of dribbling, um, especially unless, like, if you're in the box with Neymar and you want to pop out a skill move to try and score a goal, absolutely. But I think, like, in midfield and whatnot, it's better to keep the passes going, look for the overlaps, look for the driven pass inside, because it does present itself, and you should take opportunities of that instead of just dribbling and waiting for the perfect opportunity. I think it's better to just take any kind of pass forward that you can see is definitely on. Anyways, guys, that is the end of the video. Any questions? Let me know in the comments. Um, I've used this a lot, a lot. I've used it on both gens. On old gen, you get even more smoked on the counterattack, I will admit. But you also score easier. So I think it kind of balances itself out. If you've got um, literally any question about the formation, let me know. If you guys want to see some gameplay in the formation, I will be using it over this weekend in Foot Champions. So make sure to stop by on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash runners. And I'll see you guys next time. Yo, I ain't here for the money.